Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to tint shellac. Hope you enjoy. When it comes to tinting shellac, obviously we're going to need some sort of a dye or pigment to actually colour the shellac. Now, since shellac is obviously shellac flakes dissolved in some sort of alcohol, we want to add some sort of alcohol based stain along with it or a dye to obviously mix in properly with the shellac. Now, there's aniline dye, which generally is a alcohol-based leather dye. You can use them or any other alcohol-based dye or stain that you can find on the market. You just want to make sure that it is alcohol-based because water-based is not going to mix in with the alcohol properly and you'll end up getting blotchy effects if you use a water-based stain with your shellac. What I've got here is dark brown leather dye. So this is an aniline dye. Now, I use dyed shellac. Primarily, if you've seen me do restorations on totes and handles on hand planes, that's what I use a lot of shellac for. Now, because a lot of the modern ones don't have that sort of brown or dark colour like rosewood, the dark brown dye kind of mimics the more modern brown colour. It doesn't get quite as dark as, say, a rosewood colour does, but it does do a pretty good job to mimic the brown colours on, say, this sort of handle here, which is not obviously the darkest of colours, but it does sort of show some of the grain and it's sort of this brown colour that I'm aiming for, or, or this sort of brown colour on the, the knob on the front here. So let's bring in here, and I'll show you how to mix it up, and then we can do a test piece on a bit of pine so you can see the colour difference. What I've got here in this jar is just a little bit of two pound shellac. That's commonly what I use for the totes. If I want it to cure a little faster, one pound shark and you'll have to do a few more coats actually works well. Now, to do this, you need very little dye to actually tint this. If you accidentally go too much, it's gonna obviously make it darker. So you can choose how much dye you wanna put in based on the desired color that you're looking for within the tote or the handle or whatever you're going to be refinishing with this. Now, you don't just have to use obviously dark brown dyes, you can use any dye that you can find that's alcohol based and get the desired color that you want. Now, this is a super blonde shellac, so it's not waxed and it's not going to leave any color, so it kind of shows very clear to the surface when applied. You don't really notice any color tainting just from the shellac itself. Now obviously you could use an amber shellac to get that amber sort of colour, but I'm looking for a darker colour here, so I'm just using this because it happens to be what I've got mixed up. It doesn't really make too much difference what type of shellac you're using to do this, but blonde de-waxed seems to work well for me, so that's what I'm going with. You can use a little dropper if you, you want to control this, but just a little splash like that and that much shellac is enough. Now, I wouldn't say that's more than about five mils, something like that. You, you, you just don't need much. And you just want to give it a quick mix in. Wax the lid on for a minute. Give it a bit of a shake like that. And now it's good to apply. Whether it's store-bought or one you've mixed yourself, you can just go ahead, throw a little bit of dye into it and if you look very close to this jar, just in the where the lighter part is, you're going to see that that's kind of the colour you're going to end up with when it's on the timber. Obviously it's going to soak in and based on the timber colour it's going to change a little bit, but you can get a pretty good idea of how dark it's going to be before you even apply it. So now that we've got this mixed up, let's go ahead and use it. There's no reason to let it sit around and because this is so fast and easy, you can just adjust things on the fly how you see fit. So. Let's go ahead and I'll put it on this piece of pine and we'll see the results. Now remember, since this is shellac, you do need a bit of alcohol, methylated spirit, something, or denatured alcohol or something like that to clean your brush afterwards. Especially when you've done it with colours, you don't want that really setting in your brush because it could stain your brush. So I've used this with blonde shellac and you can see up on the handle that I've used it in the, the brown dyed shellac as well. You just got to make sure you clean your brush well because you really want to clean that colour out of your brush unless you plan to use your brush for one thing. So let's jump in and we'll do this. You don't want much on your brush. Just like that. And then we can apply this. You can see on such a light wood like this that 
and it needs quite a few colors to build up any sort of deeper color. Now, because most of the toe handles tend to already be dark, you can just build these layers up, or you could just add more dye. So it's up to you exactly the amount of dye you put in. But for me, I find this works a lot of the time, especially if it's on handles that are already fairly dark. This just helps to sort of even the colors out. So since we made that ourselves, it's almost dry. What I'm gonna do now, let's go ahead and I'm gonna add a little more dye to this. So now I've added probably another 10 mils to that, uh, or fairly close to. So I'm just gonna darken this. So we can already see on the lid here that it's already much darker. So let's go ahead, get some of that on our brush. So it's up to you to work out exactly how much shellac, how much dye you add to your shellac. So you can see with five mils, it's this quite light color. With another 10 mils added, so about 15 mils of dye in total, you can see it's a much darker color. And this might be a better application for handles if you're looking for that darker color. So this side's dry, so I now wanna go ahead and I'm gonna add a darker coat to this side, just to one part of it. So we can see when that dries, the difference in these colors and the effect that adding more dye to is obviously gonna change the color just like normal dyes. And because the shellac soaks in the first coats, the subsequent coats are always gonna be darker. But as you can see, when you put a full coat like that, it's soaked in, but if you apply more layers over the top, it's going to go over the top and not soak into the grain as much because that first seal, that first coat seals the grain. So we can see that this is already going to be darker just on that second coat. Just like here, you can see the, the difference. Now, that's already dry, so I can add another coat over the top of that. So you can see, just by layering the levels of shellac up, you can get it darker and darker. And if you want less coats or you want it to be darker, you can obviously add more dye to your shellac. So they're the two ways in which you can get obviously very fine colors and you can vary your colors within your shellac based on the amount of dye and how many coats you put on. So there you have it folks. You can see that it's rather easy to actually tint your shellac and obviously you can get some varying colors based on the amount of dye and how many coats of shellac you put on. And it's just a matter of you working out exactly the color and the look you're going for as to, you know, how much dye you put in and how many coats you want to apply. So you've just got to kind of mess around a little bit until you get what you're looking for. But you can see that it's a very simple process and doesn't have to be complicated and, and opens up so many different ways in which you can put a film finish on with the exact color that you're looking for that it's also a repairable finish. And you also don't have the same problems of those dyes soaking right into the wood fibers as you do if you were just applying straight to the wood. Now obviously you could use something like a sanding sealer to correct that, but why not just do it all in one? It's just easier to get that coat on and it's gonna dry very quick because it's all alcohol based and if you've mixed your own shellac, it's gonna dry even quicker than store-bought. And the, you know, the options are really endless in the amount of colors and darkness and tones of, of the colors that you get. So if you like this video and you'd like to continue to support me, please consider liking and subscribing down here. It really does help the channel out and get out to more people like you. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash Aussie Woodshed. We get some behind the scenes content and there's some different levels so you can check out exactly what it is that you get with that. If you'd like to see some more videos like this, please check out the video up here where I mix and show you all the different levels for mixing different quantities of your own shellac. Bye for now.